all right guys welcome back to the channel thanks for tuning in thanks for watching and of course thanks for subscribing truly appreciate it back at it fsd beta version 11.3.1 jumping right into it i'm going to test out and do some regression testing for the highway version of this and see how much better it's gotten we've already seen that it's already gotten pretty good in terms of lane changes but let's see if any other fixes have been afforded for this particular version okay so i'll activate right here we'll go down a familiar path for the highway a series of highways and see how fsd beta does i'll just initiate this lane change again very seamless very smooth gotta love it a bump up to 70 because it goes to 65 here took a little longer to read the speed limit signs that it typically does in this newer version but we're off okay so so far so good just getting on the highway initiating a lane change uh, I'll speed past some of the the more boring parts I won't talk as much and focus on the key junction areas where we're going to be changing interchanges as well as the on ramps the off ramps and then quickly getting over to get on another uh off ramp but i'll also be evaluating the different lane sizes and how that takes into effect as you see here the lanes are, start, are starting to um, really narrow in on the sides and typically that would cause a fishing behavior for the car to go wilding back and forth trying to stay centered in that wider lane we're going to see what that does as well as the lanes progress and just enjoy the drive um, one of the other things to note uh, for highway and just in general as i mentioned with this new uh, version 11.3.1 is that it's visualizing more of the sides further down the side if i didn't have the map data up here um, you'd probably be able to see the other side of this highway it would start to start to render that as well not all the cars it sort of gives up halfway through um, but it shows the terrain, it shows the roads, it shows the delineation between, you know, this divided highway, this part of the highway versus that part of the highway, which I thought was pretty cool. I'll try to be as hands off as possible just so you guys can see what the car is doing. But as usual, my foot is hovering over the brake uh, to be as safe as possible and being able to take over as quickly as possible. Um, for those asking, trying to, me trying to grab the wheels just a reflex, that's not what I really need to do with the yoke. Uh, I really just need to have my foot over the brake. So if I have to, if I can't, if you feel like I can't grab the yoke in time, it's not about that. It's about me stopping the vehicle, which would disable the yoke from moving at all. And I can grab it in a static position. And that should also be your reflex when you get FSD baited if you have a yoke. Uh, and then I wanted to let this surpass as well so you could see or this lapse as well so you could see uh, that there is still the nag the warning um, to hold the wheel or whatever the case may be that's still persistent coming up past this sign and under this overpass is where we get some fans and braking typically we're going to see what happens now 70 is set to 70 speed limit is 65 or five miles an hour over go into the flow of traffic and under here this overpass is where we typically would get phantom braking in previous builds. I'll keep my eye on who's behind me. Slowing down for the traffic that's here. A lot of black cars here. I don't know. What's, oh, funeral. There we go. Okay, so still slowing down significantly here. So that's still an issue. I'm not sure what it is, but I'll flag it. Um, slows down to 55. So 65 mile an hour zone under that overpass. It slowed down to 55 miles an hour, um, which is not probably the, not the best thing to do, especially if someone was hot on my hot on my heels. But overall, still super impressed with this version, uh, particularly on on highway. And I think this is just the baseline. City streets will get better and better over time. But using this as a baseline to unify the, the stack into one, I think is the key win here for FSD beta. And then, you know, version 3.2 or .4 or whatever it is, um, that's where we're going to really start to see some step changes and some of the other behavior and other functionality going from here, and as, as well as the feedback. Again, 
No hand confirmation for the lane change. For those in the comments saying that they it's been doing this, I've never seen, and I've been doing this for a while, um, over, over five years, good avoidance for this as a truck. That's kind of cool too. Didn't see that before. Snow plow, the plow sticks wider than the body. It treats it like a truck and therefore does the truck avoidance. Just a little back, back story, then I'll, I'll talk about that point again. Back story here, uh, autopilot when it first started back in 2015, uh, used to have something called truck lust, where it uses its sensors to determine whether a vehicle is nearby. And because the trailer part of the truck is typically open, it would typically lean towards the truck because it would sense that there was nothing there. Some trucks have that little barrier that blocks debris from going underneath the trailer. Most trucks do not. And therefore it would sort of wander towards the truck as opposed to leaning against it. So after lots of owners complaining and maybe even some fatalities potentially, um, they basically created this truck avoidance mode, um, which basically biases the car towards the left or right, wherever the truck might be. If the truck is here, it'll bias towards the left um, of the lane as much as possible uh, to avoid a swaying trailer of a truck and prevent potential dangers there. Um, this particular version is actually doing a little bit more aggressive than ever before, almost to the point where it's going at on top of the yellow line right here, which maybe they could dial back just a little bit. But it's good to see that it also treats smaller vehicles like this construction cut, uh, truck right there as well with the same vein. Okay. Um, back to my earlier point, but before I get to my earlier point, we're at the juncture here where autopilot typically fails. It gets really aggressive right here for this exit turn. So I got to be on my, on my, okay, we'll see what it's going to do. It's actually not going to take that route. Okay, good. It's not taking that route. We get really aggressive to go that way. And that was usually a problem. Very, very smooth turn here. Slowing down appropriately and getting over. So good job so far. Very smooth, very human-like. All right, so back to the point that I originally got to before I got lost, which was talking about the auto lane change. Um, people are saying on Navigate on Autopilot, which is no longer available in the menu items, um, by the way. They were saying that, hey, it can make automatic lane changes with nothing, no hand on the yoke or the wheel. That was not the case uh, from, my, from my recollection. You had to have a hand on the yoke or press the turn signal. When you press no confirmation, meaning you didn't require a confirmation for it to make the lane change, the real confirmation was having a hand on the yoke. The yoke would vibrate or beep. And that would be your indication, that would be the car's indication that you were ready to make that lane change. What I'm saying now for this version is that it does not require that, as you just saw before, to make that lane change. Anyone who says otherwise, if you have navigated an autopilot, I would love for you to show me you making a automatic lane change without having your hand on anything on the highway. It definitely did it as FSD beta on city streets, no problem. But on the highway, that wasn't the case on the navigation, navigate on autopilot stack. So far, so good. Took a different route than I had anticipated, but that's fine. We'll still see how it does. Truck coming up again. This one seems to have the barriers protecting the trailer underneath the trailer. Not that it matters because we're now behind the truck, which is great. Getting over again, second time. Excellent job. Again, no confirmation needed here at all, which is awesome. Okay, see the trailer swaying. It's doing its truck avoidance mode, as you see on the lane line, how far over it is, trying to get away from this truck or stay away from this truck because during windy days, trucks, trailers sway and that could cause problems. Okay, let's see what happens here. Excellent, smooth job getting over. I really can't overstate how smooth the lane changes and interchanges are with this new version. It's amazing. A little bit of feedback, making sure that uh, we're, we're, we're being compliant. And then now what's going to happen? It needs to. Okay. 
Nice merge here and not going crazy. See the lane getting wider and it not going crazy? Great job here. Now it has to make this turn. Let's see what happens. Nice and smooth on the turn too. Sometimes on the X's it would get kind of crazy and squirrely prior to this and it was unsettling. This is super smooth, super duper smooth. Even the yoke is not doing this. It's just turning and holding, which is what it should be doing. Beautiful. A little wide on the yield though, wide on the yield still. You start to see a course correct. Don't like that. I will flag that. Okay, good job staying in the lane. So what happens is it takes the turn beautifully and as the edge of the curve that comes into that point over yield, it gets really close to that. Really, really close. Um, the last video we did, it, you heard the um, collision warning go off for the uh, proximity sensors, for those that have proximity sensors. Yellow light, what's it gonna do? Went straight through, probably not the best thing. W, oh, it made it. Okay, okay, I stand corrected. It made it, good job. Happy that it made it. I probably would have stopped, but as long as it made it and didn't cause any problems, it's okay. Super smooth. Um, I only want my one catch is that it's not the route that I expected to go down. I may take another pass and go down that and force that route next time just to see the regressions. But so far, this is just beautiful. It's, it's a really relaxing experience. Comfort levels at an all time high. Confidence levels are also creeping towards an all time high just based on some of the, uh, the, the feeling that you have in the car. Hard to sometimes convey that uh, through the camera, but the feeling of just being smooth and being driven very comfortably and not indecisive is what uh, drives that confidence up. All right, guys, rerouted. Hopefully this is going to take the route that I want it to take. And let's see what happens. There's an exit right here that gets pretty squirrely. Let's see what happens. Turn signal on. A little hesitant. I want to disengage just because it wasn't taking it in time. It's okay. It might be a navigation issue. I'll re-engage here now that it's actually taking the turn. So previously did not take the correct exit. Was going to miss it. It's my recording. Uh, but previously it would take that, that exit pretty aggressively to the extent it almost hits the guardrail. And that was very unsettling. I used to always have to take over there. Um, couldn't really test that out this time because it didn't want to go this way, maybe because of traffic or whatever the case may be. But let's uh, let's see what happens from here. Uh, this particular route is going to take us through a series of interchanges and exits that should be very interesting to see how FSD beta version 11.3.1 handles. Um, when we get on the sort of more local roads, still be a highway, but it's more local. Um, I will take over because the potholes are still there and you guys know, just replace these rims. So I'm gonna be extra vigilant. So I will take over for that. I won't count that as an official disengagement. That's just me um, being extra cautious about the wear and tear of the roads and knowing the roads. Super bright, I know. I know you guys probably can't see all the visuals here. I apologize. The screen is just so dim and the, that piece of glass here is reflective. Um, you know, doesn't make for good shooting. Yes, would love if they could put the visuals on the screen as well. Maybe that's an option coming soon. I know they, they can do it. Maybe it's an option that they're gonna make available. Very good taking this turn. Very good slowing down to the flow of traffic and just taking these smooth, smooth turns. I don't want to jinx it, but this is super smooth. Give it a 
little something. So now it has to go this way and then it has to get over to the far right for a quick exit once the uh, traffic merges here, the lanes merge here. I'll bump up to 70 just to keep it consistent. I should drop back down to 55. So now it drops to 55. Great. So what I'm seeing now is it's not necessarily changing the speed prior to it hitting the uh, speed limit sign, but immediately after. And then immediately after, it also changes the speed to adhere to that sort of recall. So I, I like that better anyway uh, and keeps people from getting in trouble. So that's great. Hopefully that is sufficient for the NHTSA. And I will get over because people are coming up on me. I have exit the passing lane off. Um, probably should have turned it on. So car probably should have been in this lane anyway because it needs to get over. I should have used the turn signal to cancel, but I'll let it do its thing. It's going to get immediately over. See, the turn is coming up here. Now it has to get over quickly. Police officers are in route. Oh, not police officer. Let's see what happens here. Come on. Can it get over? Cars are coming. Has to get over quickly. What is it going to do? Uh, I noticed it has no problem missing exits. <laughs> has no problem missing exits. Okay, good job. It has an opening. Go for it. Good job. Give it some feedback. Multiple lane changes here. I had to take over because it was making multiple lane changes at once. That is not a good idea. Now it's going to get over. It should definitely get a little pause in between. And not just go straight over. That's technically called veering cross lanes, which is a violation, at least in these parts. Here's where the potholes come. There goes one big one. Wow. Oh, I just missed it. Okay. So I'm, I might not intervene. I'm going to try to steer the car around where the potholes are. If I can do that. Good job managing the lanes here. If I don't have a chance to do that, I'm definitely taking over. Uh, do not want those pothole problems. So come on, get over. He wants to get over. He can do it. He can do it. Good job. All right. So we have sort of a jug handle exit here or turn coming up. Again, just being mindful of the potholes and the people behind me. And this is where FSD beta typically fails me trying to navigate this sort of jug handle at the intersection part of it. There it is, there it is, there it is. Sorry about that, that was it. All right, I let it calm down. Sorry, FSD beta, I, uh, you were not gonna avoid that, so I did. Here we go. Give me a voice recording for that. Good job with the narrow, with the lane widening. Excellent job staying straight. And here is the exit. Let's see what happens. Good job taking it. Good job slowing down for the turn here. Probably could have avoided that. Good job coming around nice and assertive. Say that. And now it has to make this left. Here's where things typically fall apart big time for FSD beta. This intersection is very odd at an odd angle and the car typically can't handle it. Let's see what happens. It's already starting to be very hesitant. Move it up to the stop sign. Let this car go. Other cars are going. And we're all clear. Clear to go, clear to go. 
Okay. Get in that lane, though. Oh, no. Here we go. Yep. Up. Oh. All right. Doing the same antics. I'm going to disengage here because I know what it does. So good job actually making it through the intersection, which is something that it couldn't do before. Um, bad job doing the same thing that it normally does nowadays, which is wait to the last minute to try to get into a, a lane that it knows it needs to be in. So that's not not good. Um, so, yeah, there we go. That was it. That was the trip. I'm going to turn into this plaza right here. Uh, but, yeah, FSD beta 11.3.1 highway stack or single stack on highway, I should say, is pretty, pretty awesome right now. Pretty awesome. I'm not going to overhype it. I'm not going to say things that are not true with it. Yes, it needs a little bit of work and refinement, but this is a great starting point, a great baseline that they can build from both highway and city streets uh, to make the whole experience that much more pleasurable. Highway has always been great. The concern was that we were going to lose some functionality, which is typically the case with Tesla, where they pull out something new, some new hardware, and they have to take some time to uh, bring it to parity and you lose certain features. So I'm definitely glad that uh, that's not the case here. And that highway is still awesome, maybe even a little bit more awesome with the way that it takes lane changes and the way that it it um, it deals with merges, which is great. So uh, great job, Tesla, on this one. Uh, I'll continue to try to test and do some more paths as it continues to get rolled out. Maybe they'll do a little bit of a tweak on some of the issues that we know specifically on city streets. And that late decision making, which is always problematic, puts you in a really precarious situation, especially during rush hour scenarios. Maybe they can make an adjustment to that and then do a point two release that can go wider in the beta, wider to the to the customer base. OK, let me know your thoughts on the comments, what you think about it. In terms of grading this particular drive, uh, I definitely want to say confidence is still creeping up. It's really, really confident. I want to give confidence an eight. Really, really. Excuse me. Comfort is really, really getting up there. I want to give comfort an eight very very comfortable on the highway especially in this these new model s and x's the sound insulation the air suspension the level of comfort that you feel while driving or riding on fsd beta is incredible uh, so comfort is at eight in terms of confidence i definitely want to bump that up i want to give confidence now uh, maybe like a six uh, it did some maneuvers very did all the maneuvers on the highway very confidently maybe a little bit too confident with that sort of veering across multiple lanes trying to get over uh, should have had that pause in between just to technically make it not a veer. Um, but hey, it did, did what it needed to do to get over, which is great. All right. In terms of decision making, still poor. I want to still give it a four um, somewhere down there, four or five area where it's just not making the right decisions at the right time. And in terms of safety, my safety went up a little bit. Sick, low, you know, my my level of comfort and confidence are up. So safety is going to go up as well, but not too much because decision making still weighs on safety as well. Because again, making the wrong decision at the wrong time impacts your safety. So safety, I'm going to give a, a little bit of a five here uh, in terms of safety. Uh, so those are areas where Tesla can learn to improve, get better, create more levels of, uh, of decision making that can happen sooner, be more predictive. Okay. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.